Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar today. Uh, current updates on the issues and documents in Estonia. Uh, my name is Kreta Suarez Chikamargo. I'm project manager at Work in Estonia and I will be your facilitator today. Today I have here with me uh, Marina Kadak, who is chief expert at the Police and Border Guard Board, and Elena Eki Pankavicene, uh, who's the manager at uh, the International House of Estonia. We will be covering uh, the uh, commonly asked questions uh, that have come up at this situation, uh, the latest updates that have uh, happened since our last session, uh, and also questions that we have received from you previously. If you have any specific questions after this session, uh, if you have a specific case that you would like to discuss uh, with the specialists, uh, please feel free to, to schedule a meeting with a counselor at the International House of Estonia or by contacting directly at the Police and Border Guard Board. Also, uh, this session today will be recorded and the recording will be available on our YouTube channel later. And I would also like you to ask to stay on mute and with your cameras turned off throughout this session. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy our session. Marina and Ellen, the stage is yours, please. Thank you. Thank you, Greta. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ellen. I'm the manager of the uh, International House of Estonia. And uh, as my colleague uh, Greta already mentioned, the International House is uh, part of the Work in Estonia program. Uh, we're founded by Enterprise Estonia and the Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs and uh, Communications. And our aim uh, is to attract foreign specialists to help them uh, relocate and uh, settle in Estonia, and uh, as well as uh, simplify the hiring process uh, for local Estonian companies uh, to uh, employ overseas uh, experts. So the uh, uh, International uh, House uh, works on a common service center uh, basis uh, where several governmental organizations are set up under one roof in order to provide relevant services and uh, some useful information for foreign newcomers, expats and their families. Uh, so you can find answers to several questions regarding uh, documents, for example, also uh, settling in and uh, finding a business or social network, career advice and uh, pretty much everything all in one place uh, and one of the first things that you need when settling in Estonia is to cover the topic of the legal grounds uh, of your stay. Uh, this is why our uh, residence permit uh, consultation is uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, services that you can book at the international uh, house and uh, as uh, Greta already mentioned uh, we have asked uh, Marina Kadak, chief expert at the Police and Border Guard Board, to uh, explain some of the current uh, issues and uh, the frequently asked questions that we get uh, concerning uh, residency and documents in uh, Estonia. Uh, now, uh, Marina, we had our previous webinar on the 27th of uh, April, um, exactly a month ago, and then the uh, amendments uh, to the uh, Aliens Act regarding short-term employment visa have entered into force by now. And uh, although a lot of misleading communication was center, centered about around the uh, uh, amendments, uh, I would say personally that the focus from the original act was left without the required attention. And if we're going to go one step back and uh, talk about the uh, general rules of uh, migration in Estonia. Uh, what are the different types of uh, legal basis for a foreigner to uh, come and stay in Estonia? Hi, from my side also. So first of all, I think it's, uh, it's necessary to point out again that those changes which were, uh, um, which were uh, changed in the Aliens Act mainly affect only those foreigners who stay in Estonia on the basis of short-term stay 
basically for short term stay is visa or visa free regime and who's usually here in Estonia with the with the purpose of registration of short term employment in Estonia. So maybe I will point out what are the main main changes which uh, which uh, were affected um, uh, for the for the foreigners so and which weren't previously in 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 aliens act so the most important one i think is to point out that uh, uh, right now it is allowed to register for short term employment in the agricultural uh, sector for a longer period of time that the maximum time is so basically right now if uh, if employer hires the employee the foreigner then in generally uh, it is required that if the conditions are in general conditions then uh, then uh, short term employment can be registered up to one year but right now for the agriculture sector it is uh, for the longer period time so basically right now if the maximum period of time is used and uh, the employer needs to 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 hire uh, to to provide the the, uh, the employment for longer period of time then they can register for this short term employment up to 31st of uh, July this year so basically for the longer period of time which the the Alien, aliens act allows and it only affects the agriculture sector so basically for the other sectors the regulation stayed the same so it did it didn't affect them also what was the main the main changes in the aliens act was that uh, right now if uh, foreigners stayed because of the emergency situation in estonia and they couldn't leave uh, the estonia because of the of that situation and, uh, and basically the, our uh, general uh, uh, police and border guard board uh, uh, chief uh, chief order was applied then they were allowed to stay in estonia until the end of emergency situation and and additionally 10 working days but uh, what was in the alien act that they couldn't apply they couldn't submit an application for example for d type visa for long-term visa at uh, at estonian police and border guard board service office and uh, right now with the new aliens act the changes has been done and right now even if the foreigners stayed in Estonia because of the emergency situation on the, our police and border guard board order uh, and those additional 10 working days then they can during those 10 additional working days so basically today is the last day today can be submitted even for them long stay visa if the purpose is, uh, is explained and also documentary proof uh, what else? Uh, so uh, before, in old uh, Aliens Act, uh, the registration of short-term employment, if it was ended, then the police and border guard board had to carry out a separate procedure for that. But right now, when the registration of short-term employment is ended by the employer in the in the working registered, which is called in in Estonia Tur, then with that automatically by the law that short-term employment registration is determined is uh, is uh, ended and we at the police and border guard board we don't have to carry out a separate procedure for that so basically these three things i think is what uh, what affects the foreigners right now and you also ellen ask what different types of legal stay is for foreigner in estonia so basically i think it is uh, necessary to to point out that uh, in estonia it is classified into two main large group uh, the stay in estonia i mean uh, the first uh, main group is um, short term stay and the second one is a long term stay under the short term stay it is mean that foreigner stays in estonia with a visa or visa free regime um, maybe uh, the fact that visa are also divided uh, with the period of time uh, uh, it depends for how long you can stay in Estonia uh, so it is divided again in two main groups short stay and long stay uh, 
And I think it is confusing because uh, with the visa, mainly the, the, the main large group is it is a short stay, uh, stay in Estonia, but it is also divided in two main groups, short stay. It means that under that we call people who stayed in Estonia or stay in Estonia with the visa free or uh, Schengen visa, which is also called tourist visa. It, is, uh, it allows to stay in Estonia up to 90 days. But if the foreigner wants to stay longer than 90 days, he may also apply for long-term visa, which is also under the short-term stay because it, it is a visa, but it allows to stay longer than 90 days and can be uh, given up to one year. So basically these two things with the short stay visa and with the long term visa, it is mainly called short stay period of time in Estonia. So, and if the foreigner wants to stay longer than short stay visa or long term visa allows, it means longer than one year, then it means that foreigner stays in Estonia with the residence permit. So uh, foreigner has to understand under which basis he's staying in Estonia with the residence permit or with the visa and which type of visa, whether that visa is a visa free, whether it's a Schengen visa, which is also called C visa, tourist visa, visiting visa, how you want to call it, or this visa, which is, uh, can be also granted up to, to one year is a long-term visa. So was it uh, the answer to your question, Ellen? Yes, that was pretty much it. And if we're uh, going back to the issue of the latest amendments to the uh, uh, Aliens Act, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the outcome uh, uh, of the amendments did not change much. It was uh, made in order to simplify the uh, process uh, for the police and border guard board uh, to process those uh, uh, decisions. And uh, uh, if we're talking about the legal uh, basis for staying in the country, uh, is there any way for a, a person, a foreigner, to check the status of the legal basis for the stay in Estonia, um, to check the status uh, or the type of the visa or the residence permit that, that they're holding, or whether they're holding <laughs> such <laughs> at this moment? Well, um, yes, they can check, but uh, they can check uh, whether they have a valid residence permit or no. So basically, residence permit card number can be entered in our web page. Uh, uh, at the police and border guard board homepage, we have, uh, we have e, um, by my mind, uh, it is under the e-request. You can, uh, maybe I send you the link and you can uh, later on share that link with the, with the participants. But in our web page of the police and border guard board, the foreigner can check whether their residence permit is still valid or no. And usually they have to put, uh, in English, it is only with the number of residence permit card in Estonia. If the, we have also maybe uh, employers here. So if employers can check Estonian, um, in, in Estonian language, our web page, there are more possibilities to check whether the application is still in the process, whether the residence permit is valid, whether the residence permit card is valid. Um, but um, it is very difficult to, to check whether the visa, the visa sticker, which is sticked in, in passport is still valid. So basically at first the foreigner can check uh, on the visa sticker, the data, uh, is it still valid or no, whether it is uh, uh, 27 of June or it was uh, 27 of uh, April. So if, if it was April, then definitely it's already by, by the day over. And if uh, the foreigner is doubting whether the, the visa has been revoked in meantime by the police and border guard board, then they can check it uh, at, the, at the nearest uh, Estonian police and border guard board service office with a, uh, just uh, go in information desk and, and provide the document uh, and we will check in the system whether, whether the visa is still valid or they can send an email to the police and border guard board to migration advisors, provide the, the data and also the, the passport number, maybe add the copy of the passport 
and then we can check in the system at that time whether the visa is still valid or no. Unfortunately, uh, in our web page, uh, the, the visa can't be checked. So we are dealing with that. In the future, we are also planning to put the, in our web page that uh, you can check whether the visa is still valid today or tomorrow. But uh, right now, unfortunately, visa can't be checked in, 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 in our web page. So not uh, in self-service, as uh, we call it, uh, not yet. But, and uh, while we are touching the subject so during this uh, difficult times, uh, and uh, although the emergency situation has been uh, called off, uh, there's uh, still a lot of... Uh, um, a lot is going to happen with the economy and uh, the issue of uh, layoffs and uh, its uh, direct effect on the right of a person uh, to stay in Estonia. Uh, could you um, bring a few example cases uh, or the, a few different scenarios on uh, what usually happens when a foreigner uh, who is living in Estonia and uh, who has a residence permit connected to uh, their employer if they lose their job uh, what's going to happen well first of all the foreigner and uh, employer should uh, check and understand on what basis the foreigner is uh, staying in Estonia whether it's under the visa or uh, the foreigner has been granted by the police and border guard board residence permit then, as you already know, that uh, residence permits are also with a certain purpose. And if, um, if that purpose uh, wasn't for employment, but uh, on some other reasons, the residence permit was granted, for example, for settling permanently or to settle with a spouse or for study purpose, then generally, the layoff does not affect that residence permit. Uh, but if the, it's only, the condition is that if foreigner fulfills those four general conditions which, which are set for the residence permit, and uh, these four conditions are set, doesn't matter on what ground the residence permit is, uh, is granted, it applies to every certain basis. So basically for, for study purpose, for settling permanently, for employment, for, for business, those four general conditions applies to every residence permit ground. So, so they are, for example, if it was for employment reasons, the purpose of the application has to be still satisfied. So basically, if it was granted for employment reason and uh, the employment will be revoked or, or cancelled, then it means this condition will be automatically uh, lay off. So in that case, the, the police and border guard board can start processing the, the revocation of that uh, residence permit. So basically this, the main purpose, which was the residence permit granted has to be for the whole period of time of residence permit has to be ju justified. The purpose has to be still valid. The second one is that uh, the foreigner's uh, actual place of residence has to be registered in the population register. So uh, when we grant the residence permit, doesn't matter on what ground, in one month, the foreigner is obligated to register his actual living place in Estonia. And if it hasn't been done by, by, by time or it will be for example, will be registered, but uh, after one, two years, uh, it will be registered out of the, of the population register, and that information will be uh, known for the police and border guard board. Again, we will have an, uh, an, uh, an ground or option to, to start a uh, process of uh, cancelling the residence permit. Of course, uh, if the place of residency hasn't been registered by time, at first we will give you a time for that. And if by that time you still don't, um, uh, don't do anything and you don't still uh, register the, the place of living in, in Estonia, then this will be uh, affected your, your, your valid residence permit. The third thing which uh, the foreigners have to fulfill for the whole period of time of residence permit validation is that uh, foreigner has sufficient legal funds to stay in Estonia. 
So basically, uh, for employment reason, we know that uh, there is a salary requirement. Uh, for spouse, basically, the other part can uh, can support during the the time if the person don't have a job and so on. So we have different uh, additional uh, things which which we can uh, we can check before we start because of that that you don't have a sufficient legal funds to stay in Estonia. If before that we start cancelling the residence permit. And of course, the four, uh, the four main uh, requirement is that uh, you have to have medical insurance contract for the whole period of time. If you are working, then you have it. If you quit the job, for example, you had a residence permit for, your, for settling with a spouse, then, uh, then you quit the job and you won't be uh, health insured by the government, then it requires that you make uh, may uh, make a new contract with the with the private companies. But you have to be uh, medically insured for the whole period of time which your residence permit is uh, is still valid. So basically, if you lose the job uh, at the moment by right now in 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 that period of time, then even before that emergency situation it still was the and the procedure was the same so basically we will examine at first on what ground the residence permit is granted whether it's for employment or other reasons and we start process of cancelling the residence permit but we will contact with you so basically what i i suggest you to do is to put your actual place of residence in the population register because usually we will take contact with you uh, by the old data provided in the latest application or uh, through those uh, those contacts which you have put in the population register and if the foreigner is in Estonia we don't cancel the residence permit automatically usually we will give you a time but I can't tell you the good um, the good uh, 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 example for how quickly we will cancel that residence permit because it depends on your background it depends what residence permit you have on what ground and these requirements were even previously so basically in that reason it doesn't it, it hasn't been changed in in the law so what uh, i can tell you uh, uh, certainly is that um, that uh, if your residence permit was granted for employment reason and, uh, the, and the, the contract will be cancelled with you or determined then uh, it depends how the contract was uh, ended so if uh, the contract was ended because of the economical reasons of the company then uh, by the law we can't cancel your residence permit for the next three months the same applies if the residence permit for foreigner is granted as a uh, for employment reason as a uh, European Union blue card. It's by the directive that if the contract will be determined, then next three months the police and border guard board won't cancel the residence permit. And uh, of course, it depends from which country you you are from because uh, for united states of america even if we cancel the residence permit uh, for example from today then you have additionally 90 days to use your visa free regime to to stay in estonia to find the new job or to leave the country so basically it all depends on the circumstances and that certain case so so and these requirements applied also previously so in in uh, that matter nothing has been changed so if we're to talk about some um, uh, specific cases and if i were to say i'm a uh, uh, brazilian citizen uh, here on a temporary residence uh, permit for employment uh, purposes and uh, i lose my job uh, i still have my 90 days of visa free uh, regime to stay in the country right yes because citizen of brazil they also can use 90 days 
uh, to stay in Schengen area for, uh, with the visa free. So basically those 90 days start from the next day after canceling the residence permit. So if we cancel residence permit uh, uh, from 1st of July, then from the 1st of July, those 90 days applies to the foreigner. And if I don't have the option of visa-free uh, regime, uh, is it possible for me, still being in Estonia, to apply for, let's say, a short-term visa? Short-term visa, the police and border guard board doesn't grant. So basically, if uh, the foreigner wants to apply for short-term visa, I mean under that Schengen visa, then for that he still or she does to leave the country and apply it at the embassy. But if you're asking uh, whether the foreigner who is staying in Estonia under the residence permit can apply for Estonian D-type visa, that natural um, uh, national visa, which is also called uh, um, working visa, visiting visa. So if it's uh, the visa, DTEC visa, which is granted up to one year, then unfortunately by the law, it is said that the foreigner who is staying in Estonia temporarily only can apply for DTEC visa. Until foreigner has a valid residence permit, he is not anymore temporarily. He's for us permanently because he has a temporary residence permit. So if the foreigner comes from the country when, where the visa-free regime doesn't apply, then we will take that into account when we start canceling the residence permit. Also, we will take an account from which country he's, uh, uh, he came to Estonia, whether it was for Russia or for, for Brazil, like, uh, like you mentioned. So it also affects the, the cancellation procedure and uh, we will give a time for foreigner to, to leave the country and, and start uh, applying outside of Estonia the, the visa. Uh, but uh, uh, what you have to maybe, I have to add that until the residence permit is valid and the foreigner submits a new application for the new ground, for example, uh, previously he has for employment reasons, but now he fulfill all the cr criteria to start applying temporary residence permit for settling permanently. And he submits a new application during the validation of the old residence permit. Then by the law, the foreigner stays in Estonia for the, until the process will be done in, uh, uh, by the police and border guard board. So by the law, he can stay for the hope uh, for the whole process time. So even if during the process time, the old residence permit, for example, will be ended, he still has by the Aliens Act legal right to stay until we process this new application. It doesn't uh, apply for the first time. For example, foreigner didn't have previously residence permit, but he had his uh, D visa, for example, and he submits a residence permit application while he's staying with the visa then in that case that uh, period of time which we process the the first residence permit then he doesn't have that uh, legal right to stay until we process the the residence permit he has only time until that schengen visa visa free regime or or d type visa is valid so here is again what you have to look at on what ground you are staying, on what ground you are submitting a, a, a new application and whether in, during that period of time you will be legal in Estonia or no. And this specific question can be asked from the police and border guard board migration advisor. Then we can check on what ground you are staying here in Estonia, what exactly applies to you, what doesn't apply to you. And because these specific things you don't have to keep in mind. You may ask from the police and border guard board and migration advisor will help on these, uh, these questions. And we will provide the whole, whole information which is certainly uh, applies to you, not, uh, not maybe for your friend and, and, uh, and, uh, and others. But, uh, but yes, I suggest you to use migration advisors to contact with us or through International House of Estonia to meet with the migration advisor. And we can check the, the foreigner <laughs> status, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, so, and then 
then uh, we can provide the whole information for that. So uh, now when we're talking about migration advice and uh, uh, well, personally, I'm uh, one of the biggest fans of this uh, service and we've got a lot, a lot of clients uh, who send uh, their uh, braces to migration advice and migration officers who are of a huge help. And uh, if I were to give a piece of advice to everyone is that always uh, track the information to its source and uh, since there are so many different uh, details that must be taken into account only your personal case is what really matters even if some uh, fellow expat from your home country has uh, underwent uh, uh, the process uh, recently uh, his or her uh, details might be still a bit uh, different and uh, uh, about the uh, migration uh, advisors, uh, some people are wondering uh, what is going to happen if I contact them? Is it that, like uh, this, you know, the phone lines are being wired and everything is being listened at and uh, uh, some uh, uh, more attention is going to be uh, given to uh, uh, directed towards my persona uh, you know, a lot of this uh, uh, fears that uh, I'm contacting the uh, uh, authorities and the law is uh, uh, what, what, what's going to happen to me. Uh, could you com comment a, a little bit on that, uh, how you work how, uh, on everyday uh, basis and what is it that you actually do when someone contacts you through Skype or email or uh, phone or coming to the international house or the, one of the police and border guard board offices? So when you contact your migration advisors, then our main job, our main duty is to help you to understand what what exactly applies to you, what options you have to hear. And we try to help you to not to stay illegal in Estonia. So basically everything which you provide to us is the information under which we can provide you the service and we can tell you exactly. Uh, Ellen, are you here? <laughs> so uh, we can tell you exactly that, uh, that uh, what options applies to you, what doesn't, and we try to figure out what next steps you need to do, what what ground, for example, what residence permit ground will, will, will apply to you. So our main duty is to help you not to tell uh, to other police officer to check or, or, or to, to start the, the, the process. So the migration advisors, like advisors tell you, the name tells you, our duty is to, to help you to understand because if I go outside abroad, I would also like to use this kind of service because I don't know, we have lots of uh, countries in, in, in the whole world and I don't know specifically what exactly in which country applies, what doesn't apply. And I would gladly want to use in, in, in other countries also these kinds of services where to, to contact and explain my situation and ask what options if I want to stay here in Estonia a uh, longer period of time or if I was for example my employment was cancelled what additionally I have to to think uh, for how long I have time to leave and so on so basically my duty is to help you to understand which next steps you need to do not to tell to 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 other officer that uh, look at his background uh, start checking him but uh, but I tr I try to help you here in Estonia to understand what are your next steps? So, so use our service. I know by the phone you can't reach to us, but uh, very uh, so maybe so quickly as you want because uh, we are like hotlines right now <laughs> because of the emergency situation and and that pandemic uh, pandemic uh, situation in whole world. So uh, I suggest you to to write to us or or even uh, book an, a Skype meeting. 
through International House of Estonia or directly with us. We will set you a time and we will discuss your, your options. And by my mind, uh, lots of foreigners make that, uh, that, uh, that options right now. And also, uh, I don't know, well, I know that in other countries, maybe the authorities are afraid uh, maybe the, uh, the, the authorities are not uh, trustworthy or they are not trusting them. So in Estonia, you may yell and help me. I think it's uh, usually when the foreigner turns to us, even if it's not my area to, to help you, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, labor, labor uh, department should help you. I will just guide you to this certain authority who can help you with your issues. So basically no one stays without the help. And we certainly uh, try to help to understand what regulation is in Estonia. So I can't help you if you want to know what regulation is in Germany or, or Finland, but I can help you with that uh, to understand what, uh, what you need to do in Estonia to, to not uh, have any complication here. Yes, I completely agree. Thank you, Marina. And as you said, that the name says it all, it's migration advice. And the aim of the service is to give advice. Same with the International House Consultation Services. All our consultations are provided by the uh, government organizations, the according organizations that uh, are kind of like the source of those regulations uh, and uh, all our services are of course uh, uh, free of charge so uh, what we do is we consult people and if we're not able to provide the answers then hopefully our partners will be able or they will at least be able to guide you uh, forward and uh, marina now that the emergency situation has been called off uh, uh, are the police and border guard uh, board uh, offices uh, back to uh, have have there been any changes with the working hours, the opening hours, the uh, submission of uh, applications, and the processing uh, times? Uh, could you comment on uh, that uh, part? Uh, yes, I can. So basically, even um, even uh, during the emergency situation, we still accepted the applications, even uh, if uh, we didn't process them, but we still accepted them. They were maybe uh, uh, put on a hold because we have other duties uh, uh, during the emergency situation. But uh, after the end of the emergency situation, during the 10 days, the, the process is back back in the same way it was before the emergency situation so we still ac accept the applications if you for example i know lots of foreigners have been asked that if i want to change the if i want to change the employer uh, it requires also to change the residence permit uh, ground because the conditions will be changed and you can submit an application we process those application again by the law in two months and in that matter, nothing has been changed. Only during the emergency situation, we didn't accept the, I mean that application were accepted, but uh, applications were accept, ac accepted, but the process were, were stopped until we, we, we made these um, uh, duties, which were uh, by the emergency situation put, put on us. But right now, since emergency situation today is 10 day, the process is the same it, it was before. So the only difference right now is that uh, if the foreigner is in Estonia, then the regulation is the same. But if you want to hire from outside of Estonia, then you have to think about that uh, still the emergency situation is over but the, the crossing the board is difficult. So still the, the government uh, doesn't uh, allow to, to enter those foreigners who want to come with this uh, visa-free regime or by visa. So only the, the resident of Estonia who has a residence permit, whether it is temporary or long-term, or the citizen of Estonia can enter, enter the, the, the Estonia. So until the borders are not open, Open. I don't even know when the decision is going to be uh, changed. Uh, I know the government look uh, and uh, uh, at the requirements uh, every after every two weeks. So basically, maybe 
in the near future the, the change will be will be uh, by crossing the board but right now the only thing what you have to take into account that uh, only those foreigners who have a residence permit uh, can enter the, the, the Estonian board. How it applies in other Schengen member states, I don't know. I can only talk uh, from Estonian side. So, so maybe, yes, right now, even if you want to quickly, quickly hire the IT specialist or job specialist, and previously you could do it with the short-term employment and visa, then right now, until the person, the foreigner doesn't have a residence permit, he can't enter the, the, the Estonian board. So, and even I don't know when the borders will be open again, it was, like it was before the emergency situation. So this decision is made on the uh, government uh, level and uh, uh, most probably not even the uh, prime minister yet knows uh, when uh, will the borders be open. But uh, where do we get the information about border control and border uh, crossing? Uh, so I know that uh, the government uh, has this uh, emergency situation website where they try to... Uh, uh, bring some uh, frequently asked questions and uh, examples of like, if I'm this or that, am I allowed or not? And uh, uh, wh where do we look for information regarding border crossing? If you visit the police and border guard board webpage, uh, you choose on the main uh, page, the language English, then on that first page, there is also uh, by my mind still is the emergency situation or, or after that. If you click on that there, then uh, all the information is, uh, is provided there and we're up to date all the time, that information. So maybe Ellen, I, again, if you, if you want, can provide you the, the link in English and then uh, if participants want, uh, you can share it. Yes, yeah, sounds like a plan. We're definitely going to do that. And uh, uh, I had one more question when you mentioned the uh, uh, temporary residence permit connected uh, to uh, employment or given on the basis of uh, employment. So do I understand correctly that if it's given for the employment reasons, it will always be connected to a certain employer? Yes, it is. So every time when you change the, the, resi uh, change the employer, and it is connected or linked to that certain employer, then before you start uh, working for the new employer, you need to change the, the residence permit card. So basically, if you're today working for the company A and you want to start working for the company B, then you can't start working for the company B before you haven't received a residence permit uh, for the company B, or at the same time, when you submit a new application for the, resi uh, for the residence permit for company B, uh, as you know, we process it two months. No one wants to, to wait until two months will be processed. Then at the same time, the employer can submit to the police and border guard board short-term employment registration. And when the registration is made, uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, for the uh, for the startup companies and top specialists. It's even uh, quicker than 15 working days. In general, it is 15 working days we process that application. When the decision is made, you can start working for the new company B and wait until we process the residence permit for the company B. So uh, so and it was also it. It applies the same way before the emergency situation. So nothing has been changed uh, uh, in, in that matter. And, um, and sometimes um, the changing the company can be even quicker than 15 working days, like I mentioned. And uh, for example, if, the, if that foreigner who had a residence permit for employment at the company A, if he has already lived in Estonia at least for three years under the residence permit, then by changing the company, he may also 
qualify and fulfill all the requirements to start applying a residence permit on an independent basis. Though that's why I can't tell you exactly what applies to you if I don't know exactly your data, if I haven't checked your background, and maybe I tell you that you don't need to submit a new application for company B, maybe additional residence permit ground uh, applies to you and then you make that choice, the foreigner makes that choice under which residence permit ground he wants to stay to, to be connected additionally again with the company B or maybe he already qualifies for the residence permit ground which we call independent basis and uh, the official name is temporary residence permit for settling permanently. So that again we, we talk about case by case thing. I see. So I would say that the question that we get here at the International House quite a lot is that uh, if I uh, uh, lose my job, uh, then uh, um, and I want to start looking for a new job right away, it's like what to do. Uh, I would sum it up as in don't panic, uh, contact the migration advisors and uh, see what are the different uh, options uh, of uh, going and going uh, on from there uh, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, well sometimes you just get you're a foreigner living in another country and you just get this feeling that uh, uh, the moment uh, your contract ends for example uh, life stood, uh, stands uh, still and somebody's gonna come knocking on your door the exactly right the same second and uh, is going to drag you outside the country that i don't know we get this feeling from watching some movies or yeah uh, or... I, I was I, I wanted to add that you are watching too much movies <laughs> So basically, now it depends on the circumstances and it depends on what ground the foreigner is and, and usually we take into account everything which is involved with the, with the foreigner. So, and no one is kicked out of the country right away, we will give you a time if, for example, uh, the residence permit was connected to the employment and uh, you are from country, I don't know, uh, uh, for which is pretty far away from Estonia, we won't cancel that residence permit from today. We will take into account because plane even don't fly every day from, from Estonia. And, and so basically, again, there is no good reception. Uh, recept um, I want to say that um, there is an, uh, I can't tell you exactly the good, uh, good- uh, Recipe. Yeah. Thank you, Greta. <laughs> my, my tongue didn't want to tell that uh, the, the word even right now. So basically, uh, if we don't know your background, I can't, tell, I can't tell you exactly which or what applies to you and what not, because it's not this way that police will right away cancel everything and send you out of the country. I see. Well, I think that uh, addresses it uh, uh, quite exactly. And uh, I'm looking for the questions that uh, have been sent uh, to us by uh, some of the local employers that uh, are still actively hiring foreigners and will continue doing so. And uh, I think you already mentioned that in the beginning, but just to be sure, uh, the employer uh, has uh, uh, has the option uh, to check uh, whether the uh, temporary residence permit uh, application has been uh, already submitted or what's the status update on that uh, at your website is that correct yeah it is unfortunately it's only in Estonia if the foreigner uh, can speak Estonia or understand he can also also check it but uh, if you open our webpage police.ee uh, in, in Estonia, then there is a e requiry. Then there is a lots of uh, lots of op options which you can check. In English, it's only that you can check the residence permit card. So, or it is allowed to turn to police and border guard board migration advisor, or even in that general email ppa at police.ee. So. Uh, 
So basically, uh, uh, you can if you can't find the the right uh, the right page at police and border guard board web page, you can turn to us and check whether your status is still valid or no. So, but yes, in for employers, it's more uh, comfortable to to check uh, by themselves uh, in in our web page in 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 Estonia. And uh, one more question uh, from the employer side. So, uh, if we are to speculate about the borders uh, being uh, reopened uh, soon, and we are talking about movement uh, uh, from within the European Union, uh, has there been any uh, changes uh, on uh, uh, that term? So, if a person from inside the uh, European Union would to come to uh, live and work in Estonia, uh, is it the same that they have to register their uh, residential address uh, within uh, three months and uh, apply for a personal ID code? Uh, or has there been any changes on those terms? No, in those terms there has been in none of the changes. And also right now, as I mentioned, even the EU citizens who don't have a right of residency can't enter the, the, the Estonian, uh, Estonia. So basically, uh, you need to wait until the borders will be open again. And uh, then the procedure is the same. So up to three months, they can start working and staying in Estonia. If they want to stay longer than three months, then they need to register their living place in the population register, which uh, with uh, which they obtain a right of residency for five years, and also they receive an ID, uh, Estonian ID code. Uh, since Estonian ID code and ID card, it's very yeah. As you know, in international households, Estonia, it's also uh, very um, very often it's mixed up whether the foreigner want to to ID code or ID card. So we try to understand at first uh, which uh, citizen, which country citizen the person is and what exactly he's meaning on the ID card or ID code. So these procedures for the EU citizens are still the same which, which they were before the emergency situation. But just right now the, the allowance of uh, to enter the country is uh, restricted. Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, we uh, have to be uh, wrapping things uh, slowly up. Uh, our time is uh, running out, but uh, a few more words on my side is that Marina and her fellow colleagues from uh, Migration Advisors uh, uh, accepts uh, Skype uh, consultations and I guess starting from next week in June already we'll be having some uh, uh, old school face-to-face -face, uh, consultations uh, back at the International House uh, uh, following all the safety, uh, health safety regulations and uh, rules uh, uh, given by the government. And uh, as I mentioned, we have def different uh, several uh, uh, government organizations here. So head over to our website, workinestonia.com slash international house browse through the topics and services that we offer here, residence permit consultation uh, being one of them, uh, but uh, also please note that you cannot actually apply for a residence permit here. You can get a consultation in order to prepare all the documents uh, and get uh, advice on uh, migration topics. Uh, and the same goes for employers uh, who are very welcome here with all their migration related uh, questions or settling uh, related uh, issues. And uh, thank you Marina. Uh, for those of you who haven't uh, still watched our previous uh, webinar from April 27th, uh, I'm sure uh, Greta will link the YouTube uh, videos and uh, we will provide uh, links that Marina mentioned uh, during uh, this uh, discussion. So uh, uh, from my side, uh, thank you all. And uh, I will give the word to Greta. Thank you so much, Helen. Thank you so much, Marina. I do hope that it was uh, useful for our participants. 
I personally thought that it was quite clear. I'm much more informed now how it works. So thank you for that. Uh, and just as uh, Ellen said, we will also upload this session at YouTube. It will be available tomorrow. So tomorrow you should receive a thank you for participating email together with the links that Ellen and Marina mentioned, as well as the uh, YouTube playlist where you can find all of our previous webinars. Thank you so much for participating and have a nice rest of the day. Bye.